Good evening, everyone. You're very welcome this evening to our session with uh, Mr. Thomas. Thomas Paul, who is with us this evening at Holy Family Church in Dagenham. And we're delighted that he's here to give us the wisdom of his more than 30 years of being uh, an evangelist. Um, a little bit about his background. He's uh, uh, by profession a professional uh, engineer and uh, he felt the call to go and preach, first of all from his home in uh, Kerala to the north of India and then he got another call to say to go to Europe. So he's preached by God's grace in several countries in Europe uh, and he will be going to Ireland I think uh, after this uh, 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 tour in England and, uh, and he's been practically I don't know how many countries, many countries in the world uh, preaching the good news and bringing hope and encouragement uh, which the gospel does for all of us when we hear it with some fresh eyes and fresh hearts. And that's what we want to pray for this evening, that we, we know we've heard these scriptures, we know we've heard the, the words of the teachings of the church, but let's hear it now with the fresh, fresh ears, fresh minds, so that it penetrates those very parts, regions of our hearts, of our lives, so that we can be truly touched by the grace of God. So we're going to ask for now pray a short prayer of holy anointing upon our speaker and our preacher, uh, 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 Thomas Paul. You can bless me. Father in heaven, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon Thomas. Give him all the wisdom, all the gifts that he needs to, to do this mission that you have given to him today. We ask this through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And thank you all of you who are here today this evening. I know it's a big day, so we after work, many of you are coming and so many are already on the way. So, uh, this is a time, you know, we normally have a Bible study, it's a Bible study session. So, I will also give you a Bible study. <laughs> so, to begin with, one of the very interesting aspect of Bible study, according to the Catholic Church, according to Catholic Church, because when we are a member of the Holy Catholic Church, thank you, we must know what the Church teaches about the Bible study. <laughs> Bible, of course, anybody can study, but it is such a big mystery. With our normal human intelligence, we, we can understand certain things, but there is another understanding beyond our human intelligence. You remember in Acts of Apostle, uh, there was a Apostle, Philip was sitting and praying in the morning. Then suddenly the Holy Spirit told him, get up, go into the road leading to Gaza. He immediately got up. <laughs> he did not ask what for. He ran and when he went to that road, even then he did not know what for Holy Spirit is asking him to come. Then again the Holy Spirit told, look, there is a chariot coming, go. Walk fast near to the chariot. He went to the chariot. Then also he do not know what for Holy Spirit is telling him. And when he was walking along with the chariot, 
he heard somebody from the chariot is reading the bible scripture the way he is reading philip understood that he is reading without understanding <laughs> we know you know when we when somebody read we can understand whether he is reading with an understanding or simply reading and he jumped into the chariot and he said hello and do you understand what you are reading oh how can i understand unless somebody interpret it he was a eunuch eunuch from ethiopia he had pope francis used to speak about him about him this person by birth has no capacity to have a children have children to such a weak person god has sent an apostle to interpret the gospel and he became the first evangelist in ethiopia to bring to produce children for the church children for god this was the interpretation of pope francis so it's a very beautiful explanation in the new testament that bible must be interpreted bible must be learned not simply reading so i want to give you the teaching of the church on interpretation of the holy gospel or holy scripture this is another teaching it is catechism of the catholic church it is also known as fide deposito deposit of faith and it is also known as apostolic constitution the church has given a constitution for the lay people what is our stand what is the rules of the church in the spiritual realm so you know you are a citizen of united kingdom you have a citizenship so you are automatically <laughs> obliged to obey the constitution of the country you have a driving license so the driving license is not a license to drive whatever you want <laughs> a driving license stipulate certain rule you have to drive according to the rule so the same way in the church there is a constitution so this is the constitution of our faith so every believer has a duty to understand this constitution and it will be very easy to live according to a constitution so all these are short introduction for our uh, way of christian life so in that is how as father was telling i was an engineer by profession but when i began preaching the lord inspired me to learn first what the church is teaching learn first what the church is interpreting So in the Catholic Catechism paragraph 85 speak about how to interpret the gospel or the holy scripture so uh, i read it can... don't worry children will cry so it we get a home the atmosphere <laughs> Catechism of Catholic Church paragraph 85 those who have got the mobile phone you can google ccc 85 then you can get the text and it says the task the task of giving an authentic interpretation of the word of god whether in the written form or in the form of tradition has been entrusted to the living teaching office of the church church has a teaching office 
teaching office of the church alone its authority in the matter is exercised in the name of jesus christ this means that the task of interpretation has been entrusted to the bishops in communion with the successor of peter the bishop of rome so the bishop of rome that is pope is the head of the teaching office and he has along with them there are scholars and uh, norms about the interpretation of the scripture already lined up so he is the authority to interpret along with his college and so the church has already a official interpretation we the believer have to learn from that interpretation then we will not make a mistake so that is the big difference between catholic church and the protestant churches i am not criticizing them i am telling what is the difference in protestant churches everybody interpret the gospel so there are so many churches whereas in catholic church we have only one interpretation therefore we have we remain one one spirit one soul one teaching we are in obedience to the teaching magisterium of the church so this is good that we understand this now the next thing we should understand in the church this is a interpretation the catechism and there are other what is quoted here is from the teaching of second vatican council dai verbum that is a constitutional document of the second vatican council which gives us what is the mystery of the divine word dai verbum dai verbum divine word and how one should interpret it is giving and also there are official interpretation of the gospels one of that is called catena aurea catena aurea means golden chain you can simply google catena aurea you will get it and today i had to remember many times the great saint of today saint cardinal henry newman he was the one who edited and corrected the translation of the whole catena aurea of the four gospels that's all let us thank god for such a genius like henry saint henry newman a saint of great britain a great saint a teacher so catena aurea is available online even with our book you can read it online or you can buy a book there are four volumes for four gospels there is now also combined three volumes it is good to know this interpretation of the gospels are from the teaching of the early fathers of the church fathers of the church means in the early centuries from the first century to 7 and even 8th century there were great scholars like saint jerome saint john damascene saint peter chrysologos saint john chrysostom saint rabano saint remedios saint agustin saint ambrose they were all, they are so mystical the holy spirit has given them such profound knowledge about the holy scripture 
when we read their interpretation we will be astonished how they began to learn the holy scripture so it is a work of the holy spirit from the first few centuries already the interpretation of the holy scripture holy spirit has prepared through this college say up to 8 centuries in 13th century that is exactly in the year 1264 the then pope urban 4 he got an inspiration from the holy spirit to to make an official book of commentary of the four gospels collected from these teachings of the fathers of the church so imagine how beautifully holy spirit organize everything already everything is prepared it is in the storehouse of the holy catholic church so there was no other church only one church holy catholic church now holy father might have thought how to do it whom we can commission for this very easy holy spirit also organized a genius for that that was saint thomas aquinas imagine a saintly priest with a great wisdom knowledge understanding dedicated to holy scripture you know and pope entrusted him to this task he spent nearly 5 years studying all the teachings of the different early church fathers uh, uh, nearly about 80 of them learning more than 100 uh, scrolls and he found out for every word now as an example matthew chapter 1 word 1 says uh, genealogy of jesus christ son of david son of abraham for this one word what is saint jerome teaches what is the interpretation given by john chrysostom what is the interpretation given by saint augustine and it 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 runs many pages <laughs> many pages only one word and when i began to learn this i got immersed in that now for years we are every day learning this and i have a online like this i have a online learning through youtube it is many people all over the world is participating yeah and then i realized how important as a lay person every believer should learn the scripture we see in reality our situation of the world is in reality so much influenced by the world science and reasoning many atheistic many so many people interpret and so many people ask so many questions but all has a correct interpretation given by the holy spirit so this once we learn this then only we recognize how great is the holy scripture how great is the faith we back in germany i am most of the time in germany so i was giving a bible course for a for few 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 days about one month bible course that is morning to evening we learn different part of the teaching one month 
So I am also giving you that a, a, a methodology how to learn Bible from the Bible without any other teachings. Okay, simple way. So that is suppose uh, Matthew's Gospel again. Let us understand as a case study Matthew's Gospel. So in uh, one thing you should have a good Bible, a good Bible. My Bible is a official Catholic Bible, a little study Bible. This is New American Bible, approved by the Bishop Conference of America and approved by Pope Paul VI. So in this Bible, you have the scripture one side, another side interpretation, Catholic interpretation. And there are cross-references. This one word has ties or connection with the other part of the Bible. That is in the footnote. So now I tell you an example. When you open a page or any portion you read, once you read that passage, now I am going to read Matthew chapter 1, word 18 to 23. Those who have the Bible, you can go through it. Those who will be watching this online later on in the YouTube, you must also open your Bible. If you have a footnote, if you don't have a footnote, you should keep that Bible for the kindergarten <laughs> and you should buy another Bible for the adults. Okay? For the adult learning, you need a Bible with the footnotes. So here it written, now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ, we are learning this Bible study, came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but he, but before they lived together, she was found with the child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention. When, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through Holy Spirit that this child was being conceived in her. See, it was so shocking to <laughs> imagine. It was such a shock or a surprise. Hmm. He probably could not immediately believe it. <laughs> he was amazed. How can a woman conceive without a man? Probably as he was thinking, again the angel continued. <laughs> a second line of teaching. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now comes a very important announcement from the angel. All this took place, took place, already took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. And then the angel is quoting that words of the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name, name him Emmanuel. Now, in the footnote, you must search which prophet spoke this and when. That is what 
a method of study. So in the footnote when you go, you will find a connection, Matthew 1.23, against that there is written Isaiah 7.14. So that means this prophecy is from Isaiah. Now here our study begins. We are not only reading the scripture of the New Testament, we find out where in the prophecy, which prophet and when it said. So go to Isaiah. So then we, when we go to Isaiah, first before we go to the 7.14, let us go to the preface of the Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, there is an introduction. In that introduction, at least you should find when prophet Isaiah lived, when he wrote, how many years before Christ. So it is written here, a greatest of the prophets appeared at a critical moment of Israel's history the second half of the 8th century BC. Second half of the 8th century BC. Witnessed the collapse of the northern kingdom under hammer-like blows of Assyria, 722, while Jerusalem itself saw the way of... Okay, so here we can say 725 approximately. Oh, so we have an understanding. Prophet Isaiah prophesied 725 years before Christ about the, about the incarnation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now you read 714, which says the same text. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Now I am making the story short. Now like this, you go to the next chapter. Every paragraph you will find. Now another paragraph. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 comes a visit of Magi. The three kings came from east to visit this newborn king and they came to Jerusalem and they asked where is the newborn king of his, the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to adore him. He came to Jerusalem straight away into the palace because a king will be born in a palace, no? <laughs> but in the palace, the king or any wise men of the palace, they have no idea. The king said, what are you talking? Another king in my kingdom? He was annoyed. He immediately called the high priest and the scribes of the Jewish leaders as assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, see what's written next. For thus it has been written to the prophet. Which prophet? When? So they quote what the prophecy. Because for the Jewish leaders, prophecies are by heart for them. All the prophecies are by heart. They had a literal understanding of the prophecy. But they have no real, real interpretation of the prophecy. So it is written, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people of Israel. This is Matthew chapter 2, 6. Now, those who are studying the scripture, 
should not stop here. Now you have to find out in the footnote which prophet, when. So you find against this Matthew chapter 2, 6, we will find a reference Mika chapter 5, 1. Mika, prophet Mika. Now go to prophet Mika. Prophet Mika. Find out when this prophet lived. So when you go to prophet Mika, you will find he also lived almost the contemporary of Isaiah in the in the seventh century before Christ. And you will find exactly the same scripture. So like this, when you read, so when I was teaching like this, something happened. There was a young, a, a young lady, she was crying. She was crying a little louder. So everybody noticed her. And I went to her and I consoled her and I said, what happened? What is happening? I was only explaining this way, you know. I explained a little more, you know. Every paragraph I read and took how the, which prophet, where it happened, all this. He was crying, she was crying and I wanted to console her. I said, what happened? I did not uh, make any remark. <laughs> Then I told everybody, please pay attention. She is a young lady who has come for this Bible study. We have to hear her. She said, sir, I will explain myself. I will come and explain why, what made me to cry. That's very important point. It was then I got such a great surprise. She came up on the stage and to the whole group, she's telling, my dear friends, I am a Catholic by birth, but I never thought the Bible, the Holy Scripture in this way. I thought Matthew wrote a novel, Matthew wrote a novel, Luke wrote Another novel, Mark, John, they wrote like a novel. You understand novel? A story or like Shakespeare. She thought it is our fictional stories written by all these authors. But now for the first time she understood what is the difference between a fictional story and uh, scripture, the word of God? Now I realize that these words are really spoken by God. What Matthew has written is not something from his imagination. Not something from his fantasy. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit, spoken through prophets, and all what was spoken through prophets are fulfilling after 700 years in the life of Christ. And she was crying because she said, I felt such a repentance how ignorant I am about my own faith. I have studied so much intellectual programs in the university, but I was ignorant about my basic, most important aspect of my life. And I she said, I will go for a confession. I feel so repentance and I thank God at least now I could 
understand how to learn the Bible. So everybody was so amazed and I really praised and thanked God. <laughs> now the story don't end here. Immediately another woman, she may be around 28 years old, this lady who came or the girl who came. Another woman came, she may be around 40. She said, I also felt so repentant because I have done four years of theological studies to become a religion teacher. You know, in Austria, Germany, we have to learn, we have to have certain program for becoming a religion teacher. So there they are supposed to study these things. In spite of four years of religion learning, I never learned in this way. These few minutes of learning opened my eyes about the complete understanding how the Holy Scripture must be studied. Imagine a German lady, a religion teacher, if she had to come up and confess this, how strongly she is convinced about it. And the matter don't end here. Now, as soon as this is over, a very old man came. Not very old, but 75 years old. A very tip-top gentle man looks like profound uh, wisdom. He said, my dear friends, I too was astonished now. I am a retired chief executive officer of a international bank. Chief executive officer of a international bank and I retired. And in this my course of life I have learned so many things. I traveled extensively. I have participated into a lot of programs. But I thank God at least at the evening of my life I could understand the Holy Scripture how I should learn that. <laughs> so my dear friends I really appreciate that you are spending a time of Bible study this time here. Bible study. So it is not only a Bible must be studied in the church, but it is good you have a pastor, you have a priest who guide you or somebody who guide you. But at the same time, it is everyone's responsibility every day to learn Bible a little bit. Because this is another aspect of Jesus' teaching. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, he went up the mountain and many disciples, he went up the mountain, chapter 5. When he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are you. Now first point is, what is the mountain stands for? So there is interpretation why he went up the mountain. So in the language of the scripture, mountain is a place where God's glory is revealed. So we know in many places, today Father was uh, giving in the homely Jesus' teaching on the Our Father prayer. When we go to Holy Land, the guide will take you to mountain of beatitude. But we don't see such a big mountain, but in Israel the mountains are small. Mountain of beatitude. 
Mount Tabor. So he used to go up the mountain. So we should know why they go up the mountain. Okay. And it's written, he sat. He sat. You know, in every diocese, there is called a cathedral. Cathedral. The word cathedral comes from cathedra. Cathedra is a seat. Now see, in the Holy Eucharistic celebration, the main celebrant sit. Sit. It is cathedra, that is the seat of the teacher, that is called cathedra. So in every diocese, there is an official teacher, that is the bishop, or cardinal or archbishop, who is the head of the diocese. So his church is called cathedral, where there is a cathedra. Cathedra means a seat where he sit and teach. So here Jesus sat. He sat. So that sitting is ceremonially a teaching. He is a master teacher. He wants to teach. And we must understand now he is God himself. Became a man and able to watch, see one another face to face and teaching. God became man, meeting people face to face and teaching. Pope Francis, he is a teacher. He is the official teacher of the Holy Catholic Church. Couple of years back, he was in Abu Dhabi. There was all religion people gathered in a football stadium. And the celebration of the Holy Eucharist more than 100,000 people. We know in Abu Dhabi, it's like a, it's a great cosmopolitan town, but more, many language people, many religion people. He began to speak the same word. He said, Jesus' first teaching was this. Blessed are you. Now, I have been teaching this for nearly 30 years. But I never understood up to this time a very interesting expression what Pope Francis taught there. <laughs> I tell you that. Very simple. But it gives me such a profound understanding. That is how we must listen to Pope directly. We should not read some message of medias. They distort the Pope's messages. We should directly hear. Pope Francis says to this audience, he said, blessed are you. He did not say you will be blessed. That's the point. He said, you are blessed. That is the point touched me in his teaching. I never focused on that expression. Now, it's only a very small word. Blessed are you. His whole homely was on these two small words. And I was touched on this point which I never learned. You are already blessed. He did not say you will be blessed. He said you are blessed. 
Then he began to explain what means you are already blessed. And which I can now explain a little bit from the teaching of the catechism. This is where we must know this Jesus who is as a man standing in front of them, he is God. But at the same time he is man. He is God and man. He has two personality, he has two thinking, he has two functionalities. He is God, at the same time he is man. And in the Old Testament, no one could see God. They never saw God. And they used to think, we will die if we see God. <laughs> that was the situation. Whereas in the New Testament, the blessedness is that you are blessed because you are seeing God face to face. That is number one. Now another blessedness is, now when we are in the Christmas time, the Christmas, what is Christmas? Christmas is, yeah, uh, you know, I remember once, a uh, few years back, when I was in London, in middle, in downtown London, uh, about one month before Christmas, already big, big hotels and the shopping malls were decorating with the big, big stars and so many things. Christmas. So I asked someone there, uh, excuse me, do you know what means the star for Christmas? Oh, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I asked that day many people, even to many Catholics, what is the meaning of the star in Christmas? Nobody knows. But everybody is hanging stars. Everybody is buying a big commercial marketing, so decorated, presents and so many things, exchanging uh, gifts, but what for? So we are celebrating the Christmas mostly on external, some external things, some norms which we really don't understand. Now the first of all we see, we already heard Three kings came from far away seeing a star. And these three kings said, where is that newborn king? We have come to worship him. So, the star, we must understand, is a revelator. It is the wisdom of God. The star is a wisdom of God. That is Christ himself. And he revealed to them. And after he, the, the, the three kings, they came in that small house. They met baby Jesus. They are kings, but they prostrated down and worshipped him. With what understanding? Was there any kingly affair there? While Mother Mary was dressed like a queen, or Saint Joseph dressed like a royal dress, nothing. How they had that understanding, that is the wisdom of God. And they took presents, gold, frankincense, and mirror. What for gold? What these three presents represents? So the teaching of the church in Katena area, these fathers of the church teaches us, gold represent as a present to his kingly nature. This child, newborn, is a king. Therefore, gold. This newborn child is a priest. He is a high priest. 
Therefore, the frankincense. This newborn child is a great prophet. Therefore, Mira. How they understood all these things? The star revealed, the star has revealed to them this newborn king, newborn child has three offices kingly, priestly, and prophetic. So they were shipped, adored, recognizing that majesty of the king. But a child in the manger, a child wrapped in a swaddling clothes. And now, the point I want to bring home is, after they were shipped and came out, the star disappeared. Star disappeared. And instead the star, they began to hear the voice of God. They began to be guided by the angels and they got, they got a message in a dream or in an angel's voice, don't go to Herod, don't go to the palace of Herod because he is tricked, he is going to cheat you. Go another way to your country. Go another way. So my point is, Christmas brings us a wisdom of a new way. A new way. Go another way. That is the wisdom of that star. Now, what, un what understanding we have of this newborn child? In Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 526 says that Christmas, Christmas 526, Christmas is a mystery. Christmas, Christ is formed in us. Christ is formed in us. Only when Christ is formed in us, the mystery of Christmas is fulfilled in us. Not through our buying presents and making so much external. No, that is not. You can do that, but along with that, we must go into the mystery of Christmas, be fulfilled in us. Now, next word is very important. Christmas is the mystery of this marvelous exchange. Marvelous exchange. <laughs> what is exchange here? Explain. Oh, marvelous exchange. Man's creator has become man. The creator God who created man and the whole universe, he became man. Born of the virgin. We have been made sharers in the living, in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. So what is exchange? Exchange means he took our fallen, sinful, tarnished humanity. He took and instead he gave his own divine, godly divinity. You must notice, today also I noticed when father was celebrating Holy Mass, when he is mingling the water to wine, he is saying loudly, by mingling of this water, you have made us to share, made our humanity to share in your divinity. That is Christmas. That is God become man. He took the whole humanity in his body. So in, in this time, in this year when you celebrate Christmas, when you look at the child in the manger, 
you must believe the whole humanity is in this little child no difference blessed are you so that is how jesus said blessed are you because in the new testament through the coming of the messiah the whole humanity is and in fact is imbibed in the body of christ <laughs> now you see the you crucifix here on the crucifix here you see a christ not a dying christ but a risen christ that is a great thing so where it began it began in the manger god became man he took the whole humanity in his body and what for what for to take the sin of the whole world so st john's gospel begins with the lamb of god who took away the sin of the whole world lamb of god who took away the sin of the whole world when it began yes it it happened on the cross but it began in the incarnation so in the latin mass there are prefaces prefaces the prefaces after the prayer over the offerings the priests say let us pray it is truly right and just to give thanks and praise and then the priest prays a prayer which is very important it differ from week to week it differ from sunday to weekdays one of the preface is there are 50 prefaces in our latin mass in our holy mass 50 prefaces you can simply google what are the prefaces of latin mass then immediately you can download all the prefaces i would recommend you do it and read once or print it out and keep it and read sometimes particularly when you come for the eucharistic adoration it is very good to read this one of the prefaces is this o lord through your incarnation you have renewed the fallen humanity or O Lord through your incarnation you have already reconciled us with the father see from the incarnation already the reconciliation started god sent his son as a human being and took the fallen humanity the fallen humanity means all humanity got into sin because of the adam sin that sinful humanity he took but at this time don't don't have a misunderstanding who oh, then all the sin become into jesus and he became a sinner no that is all another teaching the, although he took the sinful humanity he remains holy that's the point he don't mingle into the sin of the humanity instead he make the humanity holy he sanctify the humanity and the second aspect of the preface is father you have you have reconciled us with the father o oh lord you have reconciled us with the father and through your passion you cancelled our sins look at that through your passion you cancelled our sin and through your resurrection you gave us new life that is here new life and through your ascension you have opened heaven for us therefore with all the saints and choirs of seraphims and angels we sing hosanna that's it every time in the holy mass you 
pay attention the prayer before this hosanna their mystery is revealed so coming back to pope francis's word blessed are you he said you he did not say you will be blessed you are blessed because christ through his incarnation took the whole humanity in his body now he is living with that humanity he go to the sinners he went to the house of matthew pope francis again says he went to the house of matthew we are learning about matthew's gospel chapter 9 all the pharisees and scribes were blaming matthew is a tax collector a sinner he should not be mixed you should not even go to his house you should not sit with him and eat but jesus went to his home a jew he went with he sat with him he eat with him and everybody has told him what are you doing and the scribes were shouting to his disciple why your master is sitting with a sinner and eating <laughs> now jesus overheard this he came out he came out and said the son of man has come not for the righteous but for the sinners doctor is needed for the sick not for the healthy go and learn what is the meaning of the mercy and pope francis says jesus what did he see in matthew very important teaching he did not see his past pope francis says he did not see his past he did not see his sins he saw his future this sinful matthew a tax collector his call even before he was born he was chosen to be an apostle hey come follow me to be an apostle imagine this matthew who was such a sinner became the gospel writer an apostle follow me and again it is written now we were talking about jesus sat but here it is written matthew got up all this has very important meaning matthew got up got up because he was sitting in the sinfulness of his life but now that is ended he got up and followed jesus he left everything followed jesus now i want to tell you something else also when jesus calls us or when we must understand every one of us has a call every one of us has a call through baptism the threefold anointing of christ is given to us in catechism paragraph 1268 teaches us this 1268 says all baptized are a share in priestly yeah here it is by baptism they share in the priesthood of christ in his prophetic and royal mission every believer do you recognize this i am a layman i am a father and a grandfather i have two children and four grandchildren my wife she is in germany now but god called me as a layman i traveled extensively i have given retreat to so many bishops and priests in one of the dioceses i was preaching to the priest uh, the bishop and the vicar general was also there 
five days morning to evening the priests retreat are five days that is a annual retreat at the end of the retreat the bishop came to thank God and also to thank the preacher <laughs> but he had another interesting message he said my dear brother priest we have been listening to this layman five days all of us have learned theology he has not learned any theology but I can say as a bishop and as a participant I found no error in his teaching and he was referring to the official teaching of the church and then the bishop says my point is my dear brother priest can we not have one Thomas Paul in every parish can we not train one Thomas Paul in every parish We of course pray for the vocation of priest and religious but why not we pray for lay people to grow into the teaching and understanding of the Holy Scripture. You know in the Katena Aurea the church fathers teaches a very interesting point that the four gospel writers Matthew, Mark, Luke and John Matthew and John they are apostles so they are priestly ministry but Mark and Luke are not apostles they are ordinary lay people so the church fathers teaches us even at the writing of the gospels God has given equal importance to the lay people along with the clergy along with the apostles can you imagine this mark young man a oh, layman but at the at, at the later stage he was ordained as a bishop but luke was a look the whole life he was a layman and luke is a was a doctor a painter a historian and luke dedicated maximum in the New Testament not only Luke's gospel but also but also the whole Acts of Apostle now my dear friends I think the time is over shall I shall I conclude now we conclude now because I can go on talk like this I enjoy or I am as I talk more and more I feel more and more power I never get tired <laughs> when I teach or preach so what we conclude now so in conclusion I like to mention whenever Jesus was teaching another thing was happening that was healing so we see in Matthew's gospel especially we were talking about Matthew chapter 5 before 5 in chapter 4 35 says Matthew chapter 4 35 says or 23 Matthew chapter 4 23 he went around all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness among the people so whenever Jesus was teaching the word he teach has power to penetrate into our whole body mind and soul and to heal us from all the spiritual problems problems of our soul mind and body so let us now recognize this we have been listening to the words of Jesus he said blessed are you he came in the house of Matthew he said follow me he came in the house of a widow 
whose son was dead what did he do he said to this dead body of this young man he said young man i said to you arise and the dead man rose that is the power of jesus' word is it because of his understanding he has no understanding he is dead but the power of the word of jesus has said creative recreative resurrecting power the lord who is dwelling in us is the risen lord and that is how when these words of jesus a priest through his anointing of a priestly anointing he said taking the bread he said the same word this is my body the bread become the body of christ the bread become jesus that same way whenever we listen to the word of god the word penetrate into our body our mind or soul so let us recognize now Jesus is in every one of us. He teaches us and he heals us. So let us pray offering all our difficulties, offering all our all our problems. We have different problems. We not only have sicknesses, we have different emotional problems family problems everything jesus has an answer a woman a canaanite woman came to jesus and say my daughter is suffering with evil we know the situation finally jesus said no i have come to the children of israel what is kept for the children should not be given to the dogs oh that was very painful but she did not go away she said Oh master even the dogs eat from the crumbs of the martyr's table Jesus was so shocked and amazed and Jesus said woman your faith is so great go whatever you wish be given to you whatever you wish and at that moment her daughter was healed so in our life we may have so many problems but we have one answer only one answer <laughs> what is that jesus the very word jesus itself must be understood the word meaning of jesus is a hebrew word meaning god saves god that is the identity saves that is his mission So let us now close our eyes and make an act of surrendering. O oh Lord, I believe we are already blessed because we are through incarnation in the body of Christ, and you already took our sins through your passion, and you already raised us through your resurrection. we are risen people and we believe you will come again and you will make us to resurrect and live a resurrected life we hope that so now i pray for you and after we finish this session i can pray individually for any of you if you like to come forward and can pray and my i and the priest we together can pray for you for your special intentions so let us now generally pray o oh lord we thank you that you went up the mountain you sat there and said to all the people who came there none of them were catholics they were not baptized but you said blessed are you you did not say you will be blessed you said you are blessed 
If so, how much more we who are baptized in the Holy Catholic Church in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and confirmed and we daily or at least on Sundays we go to the Holy Eucharist receive the body and blood of Christ how much more we are blessed. We thank God for that. Now we pray Lord we still have different problems in our family, in our marriage, in our children. We have physical problems. Oh Jesus, like you said to that woman, woman your faith is so great. Whatever you wish be granted to you. You said to centurion, Centurion was also not a Christian, he was a pagan. But he said, Lord, I am not worthy you come under my roof, but say one word, my servant will be healed. We ask this now, Lord, say a word that we may be healed. Now I pray for all of you, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you. O oh Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you. You are our brother. You, God, become man and became our brother and taught us God is your father. God is a relation. He is your father. You are all his children. I believe, Lord. I believe. Therefore, my dear father, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Along with Jesus we pray. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Now I pray, oh Jesus, you said believers will have these signs. They will lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. Through your word you healed all the people. Now we pray that all those who have come today may experience your healing touch. These more than an hour, all of us who have been listening to your word may impart with your divine blessing. Oh Jesus, touch every one of us. Heal every one of us. Fill us with your divine grace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. I sing a two lines of the Holy Spirit song. Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on us Everybody, all those who know Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on us Melt us Mold us, fill us, and use us. Spirit of the living God. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit upon every one of us. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon everyone. Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on us Melt us, mold us Fill us and use us Shala hala bala makira, la bala hala bala aulaya now the Lord is revealing, healings are taking place. Somebody who has a severe backbone pain, severe pain in the backbone, the Lord is healing. Somebody who has a problem in the urinary system, the Lord is healing. Somebody who has a problem, a pain in the chest, the Lord is healing. The Lord is giving the gift to for a person, for a lady to have a child, the Lord is giving the gift of a child. I bless you. 
who will bear a child shalabakara rabu ramakara i bless you i bless you and the lord is giving a healing somebody who has a severe headache severe headache lord is healing now praise you jesus these are the signs jesus said in matthew mark's gospel said at the last words that they went all around preaching lord worked one days to them to and confirming their teaching and all those who are watching this in youtube later on these things will be applicable to you i pray for all of you who will be watching this in the youtube or facebook oh lord bless them lord bless everyone lord may the may the word of christ bless everyone as jesus said blessed are you all you are watching this in the youtube is like on the top of the mountain of the beatitude listening to jesus blessed are you i think now i will conclude here now i request dear father to come and give a blessing isn't it good and conclude this thereafter i will come down you can those who are hurry you can go if not hurry you can come i will me and father will specially pray over you praise you jesus thank you lord let us once again thank and praise god thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah and i thank father for inviting me and our team members those who are here to giving this chance to be here thank you thank you father thank you we thank the lord for the special anointing that is given to thomas for his words that he's allowed himself to be a vessel of the holy spirit to speak to our hearts this evening through the word and through the holy spirit in that word we ask for that grace now to have the courage to come and be prayed over to have that courage to believe and not be resistant to what the blessings the lord wants to bestow on each of those who come to be prayed so do come and we ask the lord's blessing now on our brother heavenly father we thank you for your faithful servant thomas grant him strength perseverance and the grace to continue to speak your word and to send your touch to your people the father the son the holy spirit amen and the blessing upon us all who have gathered here and all who are watching through the uh, various media streams almighty god bless you may his face to shine upon you may you have peace and may the lord grant you the grace of an answer to your prayers the father the son and the holy spirit <laughs>